Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're taking a look at the brand new U6LR from Ubiquiti Inc. This is the second Wi-Fi 6 access point released from Ubiquiti. Uh, this U6LR has a price tag of $179 MSRP. Now, unlike the U6 Lite, the first Wi-Fi 6 access point that came out from Ubiquiti, this one is a 4x4 multi-user MIMO uh, with OFDMA access point. That means that this one is a lot beefier. And we're going to do some benchmark testings on this access point a little bit later in the video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Let's first talk a little bit about the specifications of this device. However, the U6LR features a dual-core Cortex A53 CPU running at 1.35 gigahertz, and it's got 512 meg of RAM. This device also has a single gigabit ethernet port down here in the back. Uh, there's also a reset hole, and that's it. So you got your little reset switch, you got your gigabit ethernet port, and that's all there is to this device. Notice, however, that it has this sort of rubberized piece that fits into the ethernet compartment. That is because this device is IP54 weatherproof. Uh, IP54 weatherproof essentially means, and I quote, a product with an IP54 rating is protected against quantity of dust that could interfere with the normal operation of the product, but is not fully dust tight. That's the five of the IP54. The product is completely protected against solid objects. It is also protected against water splashing from any angle. What this means in a nutshell is that this device is an indoor access point, but it can be placed semi-outdoors is actually what Ubiquiti says. So semi-outdoors means you can put it outdoors, but you'd want to have it up under like the eave of a roof or something like that, a little bit protected, where you don't want rain hitting this device directly, but if it gets splashed with some water from any of the angles, it's probably going to be just fine. And that's why they have this little, you know, rubberized grommet sort of piece that fits back here and covers up these uh, back-end components, covers up and protects the Ethernet port. The U6LR also comes with a pretty robust mount. Let me pull that out here. I've got it actually on this piece of wood. But this is almost essentially, I'm not sure if it's the exact pro mount, but this looks very similar to the Ubiquiti Pro mount that you used to be able to buy separately. In fact, I, I actually have one of those Pro mounts. I should have pulled it out before this video to see if this is the exact Pro mount, but you can see that it's got a whole bunch of different hole, screw holes and instructions for different types of mounting, including wall mount, T-bar mount, whole bunch of different junction box mounts, uh, as well as European outlet box. So, a little bit of a departure from the mounts that typically come with the Ubiquiti access points. This one is not plastic, it's steel, and it just seems a little bit more robust. Now let's talk about power and output of this LR access point. It is significantly more powerful than the U6 Lite. By that I mean the max transmit power of this device is 26 dBm in both the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz spectrum. As far as the antenna gain for the antennas inside the device, it's 4 dBi in the 2.4 GHz and 5.5 dBi in the 5 GHz. Compared to the U6 Lite, so the U6 Lite is 2.8 dBi in the 2.4 instead of 4 dBi with this one, and in the 5 GHz spectrum, the U6 Lite is 3 dBi versus the U6 LR's 5.5 dBi. So almost twice as much antenna gain out of the U6 uh, LR. The throughput of this device is basically the same as all of these devices. It's the theoretical maximum, which is 600 megabits per second in the 2.4 gigahertz range and 2.4 gigabits per second in the 5 gigahertz range. Where you're gonna see an advantage of this type of access point, of course you get the added benefits of Wi-Fi 6, which, is, which has features for more dense environments, right? So if you just have this at home with like 10 clients, you're not gonna see a ton of improvement. But you, if you have this in an assembly hall or something like that, where you've got multi-hundreds of people connecting to a single access point, that's what the 4x4 multi-user MIMO and OFDMA is actually for. It actually says 300 plus concurrent clients for the U6LR, but of course 
that's also sort of the theoretical maximum in a perfect environment. Chances are you would never actually want to plan for 300 clients connecting to one access point. You would want to supplement that with, you know, multiple access points for a deployment. If for nothing else, just for redundancy, because <laughs> one access point going down with 300 clients connected to it uh, wouldn't be a good day for an IT administrator. The operating temperatures of this device are minus 30 to 60 degrees Celsius, which is minus 22 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is capable of the new WPA3 security standard. I have not tested that out yet. The WPA3 stuff just came out with the latest release of Unified Network version 6.1.61. So I hope to be doing some additional WPA3 uh, testing in the very near future. Now, since this has more antenna gain and it's a four x four multi-user MIMO, it is significantly larger than the Nano HD or the U6 light form factor. So this is the Nano HD, but it's the same form factor as the U6 light. Let me put these side by side so you can get a clear picture here. You can see that the U6 LR is significantly bigger. And it's even a little bit bigger than the UAP AC Pro. I, I have one of those. Let me go grab it real quick. All right, so here is the UAP AC Pro. And you can now see a size comparison of all three of this, these devices uh, right next to each other. So there we go. Definitely kind of like uh, small, medium, large uh, size devices. Okay, let's get on to the benchmark testing. As far as the testing methodology goes, I use the same testing methodology that I've been using for all of these access points that I've been benchmarking. I'll put a link on the screen for the Ingenious versus Ubiquity video that I recently did where I went into the testing me methodology in more detail. Basically though, I'm running Unify Network 6.1.61. This is running on a UDM Pro and the only thing, the only setting that I changed for this device, I left everything default except for the channel width. And the channel width I set to 160 megahertz. This is the first Ubiquity access point that I'm aware of that can do 160 megahertz channel width. So right there, it's gonna have a bandwidth advantage over any of the other access points. Uh, the U6 Lite, for instance, can do a maximum of 80 megahertz channel width, and that's what I use to test the U6 Lite. So 4x4 multi-user MIMO with 160 megahertz channel width, uh, hopefully we will see some interesting results. And definitely interesting results we did see uh, this is pretty anecdotal, not very scientific, but on my iPad, which is connected with 802.11ax, I was able to get 706 megabits down and 554 megabits up. All right, and since I've got the iPad connected and sitting right next to this access point, let's go ahead and run that speed test again. And this time we ended up with 641 download and 520.9 upload. All right, so we have a little bit more scientific ways of testing, not entirely scientific, but a little bit more scientific ways of testing. Uh, so let's pop over to my laptop here and we're gonna take a look at these benchmark results. Here I am in Unify. I did wanna show you one thing. So if I click on the U6 LR, then we click on radio, we can see here the five gigahertz radio is set to a 160 megahertz channel width. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, the 2.4 gigahertz I left where it was at 20. I didn't really do any 2.4 gigahertz testing. All of my clients are 802.11ax clients. Everything else in here I left completely default. I did not even try out the WPA3 stuff yet. Okay, so on to the testing. Here we have my iPerf testing. This is where I run six different iperf commands. I run those commands multiple times and I take the average of all of the, of each command on four different Wi-Fi 6 clients connecting through the U6 LR. And I am testing the server side of iperf is a 10 gigabit connected TrueNAS box. So there's gonna be no issues with the bandwidth of, you know, doing the speed test to the server. So here we can see some of the clients uh, the averages here, 700 megabits. That's an interesting one 
because in my testing, a couple things that I noticed about this U6LR. Number one, the test results were shockingly consistent. So when you would run an iPerf test, there was usually, you know, if you run the iPerf test three times in a row, there was usually less than about a 10 megabit variation between the three tests. So these averages, there wasn't really much to average. It was almost the same exact results from every test that, that I ran. So for instance, uh, Wi-Fi 6.1, which is an old school uh, Ubuntu 20.04 machine. I think it's like an AMD processor or something or other. Uh, 800 megabits. It got 800 megabits average across three different uh, iPerf tests. Uh, 527, 831. You can see the, the test results here. Up to the maximum we got was about 924 megabits. Now, we average all of those scores and this old Ubuntu 20.04 desktop ended up with a 737 megabit average. And this is really interesting. The other thing that I noticed about these tests, besides the consistency of the U6LR itself, was that for iPerf testing, it seemed like the Ubuntu machines did a lot better than the open speed test testing, where Windows machines excelled in the open speed test testing. So I guess I'm glad that we're doing multiple different kinds of tests here because I'm getting different results. The Windows machines did not do as well in the iPerf testing, but did better in the open speed test testing. So here we go. So average, uh, my second Ubuntu box got a 476 megabit average. That is the box that is up in my attic. It's going through like two walls as well as insulation in the attic and all that sort of stuff. Still pulled down an, uh, an impressive 476 megabits average. Uh, my desktop, my Windows 10 desktop here in the same room as the access point ended up with a 524 megabit per second average. And then my Windows 10 desktop that I've got located through uh, in the next room through a wall uh, ended up with 346 megabits average. We average all of those scores together and our distilled average was 520 megabits across all of the different test clients. Just a quick interruption here. While I was editing this video, I realized that I didn't talk about something that I probably should have. And that is that when we're getting speed test results, like I've been showing here, we're talking high 800 megabits in our open speed test results and up to 924 megabits. That was the maximum that I received in my iPerf testing. When we're seeing results like that, you have to start questioning whether the gigabit NIC on this device is a limiting factor in the speed tests that we're seeing. And my question is, for a 4x4 multi-user MIMO access point that is capable of the theoretical speeds and throughput that this device is capable of, why does it not have a 2.5 gigabit NIC? To me, that is the one major design flaw with this access point. Because if any single client can be getting theoretically or in practical use, as I've shown here, upwards of eight or 900 megabits of throughput through this access point, what happens when you have 20 clients capable of doing that? Do you think you're ever gonna go up above that one gigabit threshold? It seems like that's a pretty severe bottleneck on this device and I mean, I don't know what it would cost, uh, you know, add to the cost to put in a 2.5 gigabit NIC, but Ubiquiti has multiple multi-gigabit switches on the horizon. So it's a little odd to me that they didn't include the 2.5 gigabit NIC in this device. So to me, I think that would have made this device absolutely perfect. And again, I'm sure it was probably considered internally. Maybe it was just a cost thing if it was going to bump up the price too much, uh, you know, the MSRP on the device too much or something like that. Anyways, let me know your thoughts about that down in the comments below. And now back to the video. Okay, now let's take a look at the open speed test testing. This is where each one of those four clients ran three different speed tests against an open speed test server running in a Docker container uh, on a NAS in my network here. And we can see some pretty interesting results. So the two Ubuntu PCs uh, ended up an average of 364. The first Ubuntu PC was 364 down, 531 up. The second was 426 down, 531 up, which is actually interesting because for these tests, Wi-Fi 6-1 is in the same room as the U6LR, 
and Wi-Fi 6-2, which got a better score, uh, is actually up in the attic. So that one's a full room away, but ended up getting a better score. Now, we see a really impressive score with my own Windows 10 desktop, 852.7 download and 842.7 upload average. And then finally, the Windows 10 Lenovo desktop that I've got in the other room, 502 megabits by 541 megabits. Finally, we have our sustained throughput test. This is where I start all of these clients downloading a very large file at the same time to see what kind of throughput we're getting to all four of those clients simultaneously. And what we ended up with was a total throughput of 292 megabits. So how does that stack up though, right? This is a four by four multi-user MIMO box. And I'm actually not entirely convinced that this is a good test. I'm gonna have to rethink the testing methodology for this one. I think the total throughput is being hampered by the fact that I'm copying the same large file from a TrueNAS server. Uh, and granted, it's got a 10 gigabit NIC, but four machines pulling down that same exact file simultaneously might actually be causing some disk IO slowness. So I'm gonna have to investigate that a little bit further, but it is still the same test that I ran against all of these other access points. So we should uh, see some difference in how the U6LR stacks up against all of the rest. So let's do that next. What was our iPerf distilled testing? And I am proud to announce that in our iPerf testing, we have a new reigning champion in the U6LR. And we have a new reigning, reigning champion by like quite a lot. So the average uh, iPerf score for the U6LR is 520 megabits per second. The next closest competitor was almost 200 megabits slower than that. It was 349 megabits per second. So yeah, that's quite a jump. So you look at the uh, U6 Lite and the, e the Ingenious EWS 850AP, they were sort of neck and neck in this testing with the Ingenious just slightly edging out the U6 Lite. Well, this U6LR just blew the doors off of both of those access points. But how did it do in the open speed test test? Let's take a look at that next. Again, we have a new champion, the U6LR. Once again, more than 100 megabits faster on average than the U6 Lite in our open speed test testing. Really, really impressive score, 574.1 uh, average megabits per second for the open speed test test. And let's take a look at finally the sustained throughput test. And in this test, the U6LR did not become the champion. So the, the old school Nano HD, the Wi-Fi 5 Nano HD, uh, still edged out the U6LR by about 20 megabits in the sustained throughput testing, which again, I'm gonna have to rethink my methodology on that. I'm not sure if it's exactly sound, uh, but these are the results that we got for that test. Now let's take a look at everything combined. So if we take the averages of all of these scores and we put all of these access points up against each other to see the crosstalk benchmark score, uh, should be no surprise that the U6LR is now our new reigning access point champion with just over 400 megabits average between all of these different tests. And it's, you know, 50 megabits faster than the next closest competitor, which is really, really great. One final metric is the bang for your buck, right? This is $179 versus the you know, U6 Lite at $99. So is it worth 100? Is it $179? Is it $80 more worth it than this access point? Let's take a look at that next. We're talking about the bang for your buck metric where the lower the score, the better, right? Because that's sort of the price per megabit with the U6 Lite coming in at 29 cents per megabit in my testing, the U6 LR is now second place. So it, it actually did really, really well. It did so well that the fact that it's $80 more uh, just bumped it up to 45 cents per megabit. So it's, it's, a, it's a strong, solid second place as far as bang for your buck. But this is not really a fair comparison, right? The U6 Lite is a two by two multi-user MIMO access point. This is a four by four. 
This has massively stronger gain on the antennas than the U6 Lite. So they're really used for completely different deployments. Uh, this is more of a business or a really dense environment deployment, whereas the U6 Lite is for like your home, right? It's for, you know, for clients to connect, for your Roku and your PlayStation to connect to the internet. Uh, it, totally different use cases for these two devices. So I would say uh, the more interesting thing is that the bang for your buck for the U6 LR came in a significantly lower than the Nano HD, right? So my sort of go-to access point for business uh, deployments, the Nano HD, I think that the U6 LR is at this point a better buy. It's, it, you get more for your money with the U6 uh, LR than you do with the Nano HD uh, by a pretty decent amount. So by 15 cents per, per megabit, uh, megabit, the Nano HD comes in at 60 cents per megabit, the U6 LR comes in at 45 cents per megabit. So again, not the most scientific testing, but what is scientific about this testing is that I tested all of these access points in literally exactly the same way. So uh, even if my testing isn't perfectly sound, the results should be sound uh, when compared to all of the other access points that I've tested here. Okay, what do you guys think? I actually really like this access point. I think I'm going to put this into place in my own uh, home office here and, uh, and actually start using it and see what the experience is like using the U6 LR and see if I get a uh, much better performance than what I'm using today, which is the U6 Lite. Okay, there you go. Uh, put your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear what you think about the U6 LR. What do you think about the benchmark testing? What other access points would you like me to test? Put all of that down in the comments and I will take a look and read through absolutely everything that you write. Okay, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions and thank you so much for watching.